Hello and welcome to this month's edition of Telco Talk. I'm Eleni Jokas. Now, according to international experts, there's a direct correlation between broadband, gross domestic product, and subsequent telecommunications growth. Now, telecommunications is rapidly changing on the African continent, and the change seems to echo expert sentiments. Joining me now in studio to discuss economic impact of broadband, internet, and ICT service deployment is John Jenkins, uh, Group Executive business development for the private sector at Business Connection and Murray Stain, Chief Commercial Officer at Vox Telecom. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me. Great to have you on the program. I think let's start off with you, Murray, and looking at the, uh, let's look at the overview and where we stand right now with regards to South Africans, uh, South Africa's broadband services. We know that we are seeing an environment changing rapidly, but obviously not quick enough to deal and cope with the demand that we see on the ground. No, sadly, we've got very low broadband penetration levels in the country at the moment. I think we're looking at about 7% um, overall broadband penetration in comparison to um, worldwide standards of about 25%. So we are very low um, in comparison to um, the world. And in terms of fixed broadband, it's even lower. We sit at about 1%. Mm. Okay, so dire numbers that we're looking at here, but luckily we have the demand on the ground. And obviously there's a direct correlation, as I said in the introduction, that when we start seeing increased connectivity, we see uh, a rapidly changing economy as well and it's really evident in the hubs in South Africa. What is your view, John? Lenny, we um, believe that the um, small and medium enterprises which show most of the um, p potential for the future economy um, are, are very reliant on broadband services in order to have access to cloud services, um, information. Uh, it, provides them with a mechanism to uh, grow their service offering and, and, and be more efficient in terms of how they do their business. If the costs of broadband are inhibitively high and it's, it almost uh, creates a barrier to entry or if they don't have access to, to broadband services, then all this uh, treasure chest of, of capability behind the broadband cloud per se becomes non-available to them and that inhibits their growth. In exactly, economy. because at this point we really need to weigh up the costs with the actual benefits and we know the benefits are, could open a world of possibilities but the initial cost and the rolling out of these services mm -hmm. is very key. Let's start by looking at some solutions, John, when it comes to especially cloud offerings and cloud services right. because this is a, a new generational issue that we're talking about here and it's starting to gain significant traction in the South African uh, economy. Sure. We recently um, conducted a, a survey with um, a num about 180 major enterprises and corporates in South Africa, specifically around cloud, and trying to get some insight of where strategically they think um, th this technology is going to take them. Now, it's interesting that about 70% of the respondents all said they see email, and email needs to be a cloud-based service that everybody would like to get access to soon. But there's other technologies like um, you know, customer relationship management, um, hosted voice services and so on, which all provide the companies this capability to get services from the cloud that are not too strategic in terms of their information up front, but certainly allows them to start to grow out their business. Now, those are all uh, broadband or cloud-based services that require good communications. And without that, you know, we then start to see a move towards mobile networks and the mobile device becoming more and more uh, a tool that's used by everyday businessmen, no matter how big or how small they are. It's fascinating because a broadband internet connection doesn't in itself really uh, give value such as a direct line, a telephone line, because you can use that immediately. It's all about applications and services at the end of the day, and those go hand in hand. And also there's a cost when it comes to that scenario that I've just explained. Sure, there is. Um, we're seeing massive demand, though, being created through things like the social media, which are really exploding at the moment. Um, and I know you're talking mm -hmm. about some of the corporate solutions, but uh, we deal with a lot of the consumers as well. And social media, um, the Facebooks, the Twitters, all that kind of thing are, are creating massive amounts of demand. So is video. Um, all of that um, almost uh, it's costing the consumer um, greater and greater amounts to access that and that's the real inhibitor here um, both for um, consuming that and for creating other opportunities um, within South Africa because at the moment a lot of that stuff is 
international best. Mm. Well, with regards to the actual cost, because we know that uh, we're starting to see a, an increased broadband coming to the country because of uh, the cables that are also reaching sure. our shores, which is very exciting, but still not fast enough. And it seems that we're all still using the mobile elements. And it seems that mobile is far greater and bigger here than the actual line experience that we have in the country. Well, part of that, unfortunately, has got to do with the legacy of some of the regulations that we're dealing with. Um, it's fantastic. The cables are reducing cost massively, but they're just one portion of that cost. It still costs a lot of money as an internet service provider to connect into the ADSL network. And then obviously the last mile, um, there's a monopoly on that, on that um, local loop. And it should be unbundled imminently, right? By the end it's of going to take a bit of time, we're heading towards the end of the year. I think it's going to be a bit longer than that. Uh, well, what is your sense with regards to that, the last mile mobile versus... Uh, actual cables that we're experiencing. Do you think there's going to be a fair play between the two? Because interestingly enough, from the mobile perspective, South Africa is actually quite advanced. Well, Africa, I mean, has a penetration of 30% in terms of mobile devices, which is far higher, um, my understanding, than virtually anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's been driven by the fact that there were no, no other alternatives. I mean, when we originally started to talk about deregulation of telecoms, um, one spoke about universal access, the right for every citizen to have access to a telephone. Well, now that's not even spoken about anymore because it's via mobile devices. Mm -hmm. So we see that in the more uh, metropolitan areas, in the, um, we will see more and more uh, growth into broadband and the request for higher and higher speeds because uh, corporates are becoming more and more hungry for content. But the mobile will be the device that will deliver a lot of the capabilities to the African continent. So there has to be a mixture of both the technologies and capabilities to deliver. Because some would actually argue that we could actually leapfrog the fixed line element in Africa, given the fact that we've got rural areas really difficult to get to and to actually roll out fixed lines there or cables or even uh, if we look, yeah, I can see I'm not, I'm fiber. Not, I'm, not, I'm not sure we'd want to. Um, I think, so do you uh, think that it would we, be a negative? Uh, uh, not a negative. Um, but we are we have a dearth of um, of capacity and last mile access in this country at the moment and I think the more the merrier so we're seeing pavements dug up to put fiber in that's not a bad thing I'm not sure there's a business case yet for fiber to the home but is the cost worth the, be the benefits at the end of the day um, long term I think in terms of the opportunities that it offers the economy yes it is mm. um, but the business case to put fiber to the home right now I'm not convinced yeah. it, um, it exists uh, Angus might disagree with me and for you, I mean, looking at, at the play between all the elements, and I mentioned the cost versus the benefits, and ultimately that's what it actually should come down to because if you're pay paying exorbitant prices for this, and yes, you'll have uh, faster internet speeds, perhaps it should be just focused on business right now and not so much on home. I think it's about the penetration and the economic power of your consumer. You know, once again, uh, one looks at the, the penetration in the major metropolitan. So if you looked at the, the greater uh, Etiquini or uh, Cape Town or certainly here in Gauteng, we see people like Dark Fiber Africa and everybody else putting a lot of fiber into the ground. And th because there's a great deal of demand, both from enterprise and from um, public sector and, and consumers to, to, uh, to get this and they're able to afford it. But as you start to move out, you know, your, your, your economies just don't exist. So there one starts to see that it's much more the copper in the ground, the historical copper. And I mean, Telcom have done a great job of, of now trying to put ADSL and, and the various services on top of that. Will we see fiber to the home out, uh, you know, in this broader spectrum in the near future? I don't think we can afford that. So there we'll see the wireless and the mobile coming in. And we can't string fiber to every small town in, um, in the country. So there's a solution in Africa for every one of those. And, and I think that's the secret for the service providers is to understand that you've got to have all of it in your toolkit and you've got to be able to apply the one that's necessary. Well, just also taking a look at schools because I think that's quite an important element. And there's a lot of case studies where we actually see, and especially within the rural areas, if we do see connectivity to the schools and we have internet hubs within the rural areas, that it, that is one way to start increasing Absolutely. economic activity and then you sure. reduce travel because you can you know, connect mm. via online uh, elements. I know that there are a lot of other things that people are doing so let's touch on that for a bit Murray and do you think that that is we've done enough on that front no not nearly um, we have a billion rands of unallocated funds in um, USASA that could be used to 
enable schools um, to be connected in rural areas. Um, that's sitting unutilized, and that's certainly something that um, could be used. It's, 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 it's license fees paid by the current licensees. And why has that money not been allocated as yet? Uh, I think you need to ask the government that. Um, it's sitting unallocated. I, I don't think they've found a, um, the right way to allocate it, but, it, but the point is it's there to enable access to underserviced areas. Um, and it's looking for a channel to be to be utilised, and, um, and that's that's a, a fantastic place to find some of the funds. Mm. John, I see you agreeing there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've done a lot of work recently in terms of uh, with the various um, education departments in terms of assisting to put containerized um, internet access points, and we've we've actually recently deployed. Um, a specific uh, VSAT solution across Africa, which we uh, built out of our data centers, specifically to take um, higher speed access and, and uh, broadband access into the more rural communities. And some of our pilot projects were actually bringing on some schools. We recently did a demo for um, the Minister of Education, and he sent us a very nice letter saying it was great to see it. If we don't get those kind of uh, capabilities into the schools, um, we're going to continue to have this problem where there's a disconnect between the real world and what, what, what our children need to be learning and what's actually happening in the curriculum. Most of uh, the kids in the, in, in the more um, uh, rural communities are not getting access to the internet, whereas our kids are all at school and 90% and of their homework has been done on the internet and over Google and pulling out and doing their homework. How do we bridge that gap of the haves and the have-nots if we don't take this technology aggressively to the schools? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. And Murray, you know, we keep talking about ICT growth, uh, you know, perhaps very correlated to GDP, but do you think that massive growth on the economic front can actually occur without access to the internet? Because you've got to connect online, you've got to see all the information. Yes, it's information overload in many senses, but I cannot picture my life no. without Google. No. I cannot. <laughs> no, it's becoming more and more focused around that, around um, around Facebook, around um, all the social media, and you need access into that to be able to utilize that properly and take advantage of, um, of, of all the opportunities that, that exist there. Right, we're going to go to a very short commercial break, more on the economic impact of broadband when we come back, and also Angus Hay from Neotel will be joining us on the desk. Stay tuned.